Right, let's return back to London because the funeral of Margaret Thatcher took place today. She was, of course, Britain's longest serving Prime Minister for 150 years. Let's cross over to our central London studios because they were joined by Michael Cockrell, a journalist and documentary maker who's interviewed Lady Thatcher many, many times. Uh, Michael, you interviewed her before she became a Tory leader, right up until after she left office. She had a remarkable transformation. She certainly did. When I very first interviewed her, as you say, just before she became Tory leader, um, she was sort of white-faced and, and as uh, delicate as porcelain. But she learnt how to appear on television over the years uh, until she was transformed, really, uh, into the Iron Lady that, that we came to know so well. And she, she took lessons about how to appear on television. She had a, a, one of the early spin doctors um, and when I asked her at the time about him, she said, oh no, I think he comes to me for advice rather than the other way around. But when I asked her about it after she'd left office, she said he was, he was really important to me. He said my hair had to change, my clothes had to change, my voice had to change. She was actually sent to the National Theatre to um, have lessons to lower the pitch of her voice because private opinion polling showed that viewers were put off by uh, her high-pitched voice which they thought was rather screechy and she used to say every day a hundred times a day nga koka nga koka to bring down the pitch of her voice Michael she seemed incredibly aware about the importance of media what was she like as an interviewee when you spoke to her was she terrifying <laughs> well interestingly it worked both ways I mean she would work herself up she was very very nervous before big interviews, but she said that was part of the thing, that the, the, the adrenaline would flow. She said, I asked her what she thought of the big set piece TV interviews, and she said to me, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And I remember Sir Robin Day, who was the great BBC interviewer, who used to interview her when um, he and I worked together on Panorama, and he was once going to interview Mrs. Thatcher in number 10 Downing Street. Um, and he said to me, why don't I ask her Prime Minister, what's your answer to my first question? Because he knew that whatever he'd uh, worked out to ask her, she would have worked out the sound bites that she wanted to get across, normally having rehearsed it with her tough Yorkshire press secretary, who was called Sir Bernard Ingham, uh, and they would work out the sound bites. So it was quite difficult to, to interview Mrs Thatcher uh, when she was in full flight. She said, no, stop it, I'm just getting into my stride, as you try to ask the next question. But I've, I've been hearing so much about how she was actually very supportive of, say, members of her staff who weren't in those higher positions. To the underdog, she seemed to have a place and a gentle word for many people. Yeah, I mean, there, there was this, this extraordinary contrast between what many people, especially those people who lost their jobs and so on, and people in, in the north of England, um, saw as this harsh, uncaring side of Mrs Thatcher. And the way she was, uh, from all the staff, I've ever talked to who, you know, like her, her drivers, her people who work for her in number 10, she, she was very, very solicitous of them. And even, it was interesting, when, when I would do an interview with her, um, after we'd finished, she would, um, if the interview had gone well, she would um, pour out a whiskey and soda, not just for me, but for the whole staff. She said, the cameraman has to have it, the sound man, the lighting man. You couldn't do your job without those people, she said. But I read um, that in one of your reports that she never actually asked out loud for a whiskey and soda. That was all very quiet. <laughs> well, it was interesting. I was filming her when she went to the British Embassy uh, when she was leader. Um, and the then British ambassador said, uh, would you like a drink, Margaret? And, and um, she reached for a piece of paper and, and um, wrote down. I discovered afterwards she'd written on it whiskey and soda. She wasn't going to be filmed asking for a whiskey, whiskey and soda, still less drinking it. <laughs> Michael Cockrell, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. I wish we could talk further. Michael Thank Cockrell, you. journalist and documentary maker who's interviewed Margaret Thatcher many, many times.